could see you participate in senior day. Does that mean you're coming back next year? Yeah, I'll be back next year. Uh, well, uh, of course, me uh, being a fifth-year senior, I mean, that option for me to go to the next level was there. Uh, of course, for anybody, I mean, you still got to see how the season plays out. So, um, just I'm at that point in the season where it's like, okay, uh, where am I at? Uh, do have to evaluate uh, where it is because at the end of the day, this is um, – this is a game, and uh, partially, a uh, partial of it is a little bit of business in there, and you you do have to take care of it. So, um, got to the point where uh, we were in the season, and I was like, all right, cool. Uh, where am I at? Had to go ask people for some advice. Uh, of course, ask Coach Fleck and uh, Coach Debo for advice, and um, see what they thought. Uh, got their opinions on it. Uh, was thinking back uh, throughout the season and seeing uh, how it was playing out for me, uh, what the signs were, and what I thought the best was going to be for me. And, uh, yeah, coming back next year is definitely going to be the best for me, uh, being able to maximize all my opportunities and uh, exhaust eligibility. So, yeah. How much have you talked with Devin Eastern? He's another guy that has the opportunity to come back about potentially teaming up in 25. I mean, we talked a lot about it. Uh, not crazy, crazy amount, but I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, we're excited for it, honestly. Uh, not only continuing to build uh, the D line, but just continue to build upon the experience that we already have. Because I mean, we've seen uh, the amount of destruction that we can create when we're uh, focused. So, uh, me, Dev, and then of course Zero too. I mean, he'd be pissed if I didn't shout him out. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, him too, uh, just continuing to think about the amazing amount of things that we could do as a D-line and the amount of uh, impact that we could have on us as a team as we continue to move forward. So, I mean, I'm super excited. You mentioned Anthony. He's played a couple of his better games in his career against Rutgers and against Penn State. What do you think is starting to, to click for him here in November? Uh, it's just uh, he's trusting the process. Uh, I feel like anybody who's come through this program knows that it's, it's not an easy process, and especially for him, it hasn't been an easy process either. So for for him, he's figuring out um, the game. The game's starting to come to him a lot faster. I mean, of course, anybody that's played football understands uh, like the time that it takes to truly understand the game of football, especially when you get to the next level and this level especially. So he's figuring out – things that he may not have gotten like a year ago. And now he's putting it into perspectives to where he can go play faster. We've seen Martin Owusu and Theo Randall travel with you guys on the defensive tackles every every mm -hmm. game this year. What have you seen from them here as they wait for their shot? Yeah, um, of course, uh, young guys, but at the same time, they're not young guys. I mean, they've, they've had experience in practice. They played uh, a couple games here and there because uh, we need them to. But at the same time, it's just – them being patient. I mean, whenever their number's called, they're going to be ready. So I'm, I'm truly confident in those two guys, especially uh, 99 and 87, of course. But, I mean, when, when they step on the field, they're going to make their uh, presence known. The Wisconsin-Minnesota games, historically, one of the trenches. You've been on both sides of that. So what's the key going into the game on Friday? Uh, I mean, we all know that this is about to be a physical game. Uh, we've seen it in uh, years past that it mean a lot of running – a lot of running the ball, physicality when it comes to defense on both sides. So uh, the key of it is uh, not only who's going to want it more, but at the same time it's going to be who's going to be uh, paying attention to the execution and the details. So uh, at the same time, uh, of course, Coach Fleck continues to talk about 78% for us. So uh, being able to focus on the intricate details in those uh, things with uh, 78%, the ball, tackling, explosive plays, and then, of course, narrow uh, situations, middle eight, uh, as Coach Heatherman keeps on talking about. So just being able to uh, dial down the situations. And, yeah, I mean, that's that's really what's going to come down for the game. There, there, uh, if you win there, you can lose, you can end their season. Uh, is that a motivating factor at all? No. Nah. Uh, at the end of the day, we got to just go one and no, uh, worried about the next opponent. I mean, of course, yes, it is Wisconsin. And, of course, this game does mean a lot to us as players and, of course, the state of Minnesota. So, yeah, we're playing for that. But at the same time, 
it's another game. Uh, nameless, fa faceless opponent. Anything else for Jalen? Awesome. Thanks, Jalen. Thanks, Jalen. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Watch back the, the tape from Penn State. What made them, at least their defensive line, have the ability to get so much penetration? Yeah, I think um, a lot of the times it was just some of their movements. You know, it's hard to pick up at times. Um, and, you know, our our job is to be five is one. So if one person's off, then, you know, there's that gap open. So um, definitely more penetration than we had hoped for on Saturday. But... At times, we definitely ran the ball effectively, um, but the self-inflicted wounds are what killed us eventually. We saw you come out in the 83 jersey out of the tunnel. Did uh, your family know that was coming, or was that a little bit of a surprise? That was a surprise, and uh, I'm glad that it was. It worked out smoothly, other than having to take the jersey off afterwards. But <laughs> uh, no, it was a very heartfelt moment for me and my family, and um, that was a lot of fun. Um, there'll be uh, memories of that forever, and. They get to keep the jersey, so that was very cool. Would you come up with the idea of that, or was it you? Yeah, I came up with the idea. Just wanted to give a little nod to my dad there with 83. When you look at this Wisconsin defense, what stands out to you? They're big. You know, they've got some a big interior, and then their ends are, are very athletic as well, and they're deep at end too. So, um, you know, obviously – Wisconsin is going to have a great front seven. They always do. So um, it's going to come down to who's going to win the line of scrimmage. You know, whoever wins the game is going to – or whoever wins the line of scrimmage is whoever's going to win the game, in my personal opinion. Um, and that's kind of how this game is always rolled. Um, so I'm excited for the challenge. Last regular season game as a gopher, and I think we all have that mindset. Um, obviously coming off a – a loss that was close and, you know, gives us confidence into the next week, but there's a lot to learn from um, if we want to beat a team like Wisconsin on the road. So um, we're excited for the challenge. How was the O-line and quarterbacks bonded over the free house dinners? Uh, we bonded a lot. You know, we've some some deep conversations at those dinners and just, you know, stuff that, you know, we're not allowed to talk about football. You know, if, if we're out there and somebody starts talking about football, we, we nudge them or whatever. We're not allowing that. Um, so that's our little hour, hour and a half of the week where we can just relax and, and enjoy a nice meal and, and have some fun conversations together. But a lot of bonding. What are the other topics? Oh, you know, just, uh, just guy stuff. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, all the above. You know, it comes down to – you know, we're talking about last week we were ranking movies or TV shows or um, the menu at Freehouse. So all the above. Is there somebody that puts down more food than anybody else? No, they kind of, they, they portion us. No, I'm kidding. They got, you know, we all get the same amount of food, basically. Uh, they've got a little menu for us of like, burgers or pasta or whatever and last week we all got the same thing we didn't coordinate it we were just all craving the same uh like mac and cheese dish it was great was, was last week the last one given the timing of the game this week and travel on thanksgiving uh i'll have to talk to max but it, we might have to schedule it for wednesday this week as opposed to thursday but um i hope it wasn't the last one <laughs> what's uh the rivalry with wisconsin mean to you Oh, it means a lot to me. You know, growing up, this was like the game, you know. And obviously followed the Gophers my whole childhood. But when Wisconsin was in town or the Gophers were going to Wisconsin, it was obviously the biggest game of the year. No matter the record of each either team, it was always a, a tight game and always a, you know, like I said, the one up front. And so seeing those guys that I emulated – Growing up, for playing for the Gophers, some of those old linemen dominating in this sort of game is is really special to watch as a kid and then to grow up uh, learning from. And then now to play in it means even more. Quinn, have you decided if you're going to play in the bowl game or not? I'm playing, 100%. Why so much conviction or something like that? Uh, I think it's something, uh, a bit of a standard. Um, in, in my opinion, I want to set a standard. Right, and that's kind of been my uh, 
my goal ever since I came here was to be the leader, to be the standard all the time. And I don't want it to, um, I don't want it to become a standard that we don't play in a bowl game if we have NFL aspirations. Obviously it's different for, for guys who are, you know, maybe touted a little bit higher or think, you know, it'll, it'll be better off for them to, to start working on the next step, whether that's combine training or what have you. Um, but that's one opportunity that I'm blessed with to play with the guys, and I'm going to take full advantage of it. Anything else for Quinn? All right. Thanks, Quinn. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Playing the bowl game, I know you've accepted a postseason mm -hmm. invite to a different All-Star game. Have you made a decision if you're going to play in whatever the bowl game is? Yeah, or? definitely. I'm definitely playing. I think it's a number one, a really cool experience, um, especially for someone coming from a, a the FCS or you know a smaller. Uh, division, um, having the ability to play in a bowl game, um, and it's another opportunity for us to play as a team. And um, you know, one more game uh, with with your with your team, and um, you know, it's a compilation of what you have worked on all season uh, to play one more game together. Did you kind of know that when you came here in January that no matter what happens, you wanted the opportunity yeah, to do something like for that? for sure. I got to visit obviously during uh, you know last year's bowl game and got to experience a little bit of what it's like, and um, I'm excited that you know we get to be able to do that. But you know, we're we're focused on. You know, winning this week and um, putting our best foot forward, and uh, we'll focus on the rest of the season after. Harbo mentioned that in that Penn State game plan, you had 63, in, in his estimation, different checks, kills, whatever that may be. Normally, it's around 20, 25. Mm -hmm. How much extra time did you have to go in to make sure that even the chess player that you are, yeah. you were ready? Yeah, a ton. Um, I, I thought Coach Harbo, first of all, did an amazing job teaching it because that was it's not easy to teach that, and um, it's. You know, as, as much time as we had um, for you know throughout the bye week um, and throughout game week, um, actually prepping the game plan takes a while, so you don't really get those kills and alerts until um, you know, towards the end of the bye week and into the, the the game week. And um, Coach Harbo did an amazing job of of laying it all out, um, you know, piece by piece and making it simple um, for as complicated as it was. Um, and you know, I, that's a credit to to him and his staff for for teaching us that because it's not just me that has to know the kills and alerts; it's everybody else too. The O line tight ends, the running backs, the receivers. So I thought they did a really good job of, of learning all that. And, um, you know, I'm proud of the game plan they put together in that game. What were your takeaways after watching the tape back? From yeah. Penn State one? It's, it's a tough, tough loss for sure. Um, you know, you go back to the, the statement that it's, it's a football game and um, things are going to go, you know, one way or another and you have to live with the, res with the, with the result. Um, and go back to the tape and correct what you can correct and, and build upon the positives. And, um, you know, you, you watch the film and, you know, you – you wish you could have those plays back, but that's how every football game is. And uh, ultimately, you have to live within yourself and um, know what, you know, trust what you did throughout the bye week and throughout the, the game week of the preparation that you put in um, and, and know that you did everything you could. And, you know, whether the ball, you know, bounces your way or not, um, you know, that's what you have to live with and, and continue to build and, you know, put your best foot forward for the next week game. Max, how did the uh, free house dinner start? How did that come together? Yeah, so I did that. Um, something similar in New Hampshire. I did. We had like a little, um, like a little on-campus restaurant in New Hampshire. I did that with my online there, and uh, we loved it. And so I, I came here and um, had some help find a restaurant that would, you know, help sponsor us and support us throughout the season. And um, and I was pretty cool. They get to, you know, Free House has been amazing for us, and they support us every single week where we can actually go in and, um, you know, benefit from from who we are as as people. And um, they've been very gracious, you know, housing us for every Thursday night in there and um, it's it's been fun the, the guys have had a lot a lot of fun doing that this year um, and Quinn just said that there's a, a rule of no football talk no football talk no and I think it's I think it's yeah it's it's something that you know we live by it, it, we do we're doing we're talking football all, all day long every single day and um, for those you know two hours or an hour and a half that we're there um, football is completely off the table and I think that's a, a good thing where you know you can kind of get away from football and um, you know talk to each other as human beings and not football players, and um, you know, look at each other the same way, and not just as in a football helmet. Uh, Quinn said that maybe debates on TV shows or movies with kind of sort of comments or conversations. Yeah. That you guys talk about. Yeah, we always Coop always has a uh, a movie suggestion for the guys that night. Um, he's always he always has something in his back pocket for the guys to watch. Um, you know, it's it's a it's more of just a you know a social conversation. I think after. You know, like you know how the week went. Uh, how's how about our families? How's every everybody's families doing? Um, you know what what their plans are. You know, in life in general, it's a it's a fun way to 
again, continue to build relationships with people, um, but also just to, to get away from, you know, football for a couple hours. Is, is that going to be the last one last week, given the schedule? No, they, uh, Free House is supporting us through December, so we'll be able to, you know, have one this week um, and then, you know, throughout bowl prep when we're here. So um, we're excited to, to con continue that through the rest of the season. What have you learned about this rivalry between Minnesota and Wisconsin? Yeah, so the first thing is, um, you know, I, th I believe it's the longest standing uh, FBS college football rivalry most played um, in the country. And um, that's one of the really cool things about playing college football, especially at the University of Minnesota, uh, where you get to play in that game and you get to live that experience, um, especially in a, a really cool environment in Madison. And, um, you know, we're really excited to, to play this week. And um, especially playing on Friday where, you know, you're one of the only, you're probably the only game on, right? And, um, I think for for us, it's a another chance for us to get better, um, and also you know compile all the the wins and losses we've had this year, um, and you know really learn the lessons from from the events we played this year, and um, continue to build and continue to get better. And at, you know Friday's just the next opportunity for us. Played in a lot of cold football games, playing out at New Hampshire, mm -hmm. but this week going to be the coldest of the season, probably in the teens somewhere. Yeah. What are the difficulties of trying to play quarterback in such cold temperatures? Um, I think it's you have to get used to it. I think if someone's not used to it, it's difficult. Um, but I think it depends on you know. Sometimes people talk about the football is how they can change in the cold weather. And um, shout out to to my EQ squad, the Brady Bunch. I like to call them. And uh, you know they they keep the footballs ready and they keep them. Um, you know they got to kind of be heated throughout the game, right? Because if they get too cold, then uh, the footballs can you know kind of get slick. And they do a great job of that. Um, for quarterbacks specifically, it's you know keeping your hands warm when you can. Um, depending on if you're a long sleeve guy or a short sleeve guy. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that go into it, um, but at the end of the day, if you focus too much on being cold, you're going to be cold. Um, if you just focus on playing football, you're, you're not going to really notice it. And um, you know That's what you ask for when you play Big Ten football is you know, when you get to November, you're playing cold weather football. And if you're still playing in November and continue to play after, then you're probably doing the right thing. And um, for us, it's the next one. And I think these guys, you know, most of these guys in this team have played in cold games, so I think we're going to be in good shape. You could end Wisconsin seasons if you beat it. Um, is that a bit of a motivating factor at all? Uh, I don't think we're, we're focusing on that. Um, I think you know for us it's it's about us, and we focus on you know us for for the whole season, right? Where we want to build upon you know what we have as our team and um, what we can get better at each and every single week. And you know regardless of if it's our last regular season or not, um, our last regular season game or not, it's um, it's the next one for us. And you know for us it's another chance to get better um, as a team and as individual players and. Um, you know, we're focused on, on being the best team we can be on, on Friday. Do you participate and jump around, or does this sort of depend on uh, how the game's going? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I've you know, seen videos. You try to put yourself in that, in that environment, that atmosphere. of um, That's part of preparation, you know, is, is looking at where you're playing at, um, what the environment's like, and watching videos of what it's like. And um, most of the teams that I've seen play there, the, the opposing teams are jumping around as well. So um, I'll just follow suit with my team, and, uh, you know, I'll continue to, to keep an even keel mindset. But um, understand that. You know, it's one of the, the coolest you know, environments called football. Um, and so we get to, to experience that and uh, play in a, an amazing rivalry game. So, Anything else for Max? Right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Back to Penn State tape as a defense, what were the main takeaways? Um, communication was big. I feel like we played a very sound game overall. Um, obviously not as complete as we wanted it to be in order to get the job done, but I feel like we did do um, – we did do a good job playing our game plan and what we thought was effective. Um, we can always be better with communication, and obviously you can always tackle better and things like that. Can you run us through that busted coverage touchdown and what happened and what was supposed to happen? Yeah, I mean they caught us. They caught us in tempo. Um, they caught us in a situation where we didn't. We weren't able to get our check out in time, and it resulted in a touchdown. One of the one of the things we got to keep being, getting better at each and every week is just being able to communicate more effectively and quicker. Ethan, I saw that you had quite a bit of family there. Um, what was it like to kind of have that uh, return for a two-point conversion in front of all your family? Like that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was senior day, so it was big just having a lot of my family there. Um, I had my niece and my nephew up from Texas. Um, my nephew plays football down there in Texas. He's a younger kid uh, getting ready to hit high school soon. So um, just having him being able to – he was also here for the USC game. So having them here for these two big games and get to see that type of atmosphere as he gets ready to enter high school, that was probably a big, bigger moment for me, more so than seeing my cousins or my aunts or my mom and dad. My mom and dad come to every game, so it's kind of normal for them at this point. But definitely just letting him get exposed to seeing that type of atmosphere and that type of play was definitely amazing. 
Who's taught you most about the Wisconsin rivalry? And is, is there a, situ is a situation where you've developed the disdain for Wisconsin because of that? I mean, uh, same thing every week, 1-0 championship mindset. Um, obviously, they talk about what, what's going on there um, and just informing me that it's, it's, a, it's another game. Um, obviously, it's going to hold some importance and you just got to go out there and be ready to play. Did it all feel like getting that uh, the two point on that long return was maybe some sort of like ball don't lie situation after the PI call? Um, I'm not really going to speak on that. I just felt like it was a great return, great block by Jack, way to get through the gap, which is what we saw in film. He executed the block to pretty much perfection, and I just did my part and just was ready for the scoop and score and made sure I didn't get caught. You've played a lot of college football over the last four years. Do you feel like you know what constitutes a flag and what doesn't in terms of contact down the field at this stage of your career? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely something um, – I feel like any DB is aware of. You never want to get those calls drawn on you because they can they can uh, swing the way things are going or or just take away from your technique. Um, and you never want to compromise your technique for anything. So you definitely kind of you think you have an understanding of it. You kind of want to have an understanding of it. But at the end of the day, what's called is called, and if it's called, it that's what it was. What have you seen in Zaquan Bryan his development this year? Yeah, he's going to be a great player here for the, his uh, right, remainder of his eligibility, however many he needs to use or however many he chooses until he graduates. Uh, he's a dog. He's tough. Um, I feel like he embodies what me and Wally tried to pass down, um, the confidence, the toughness, the, the smarts, the physicality. He has it all. He'll be great. Earlier in the season uh, after the Michigan loss, P.J. Uh, raves about how the, the locker room came together after that. Do you see traits of that this weekend after, after the Penn State game? Um, yeah, I just feel like it just carried over from, from the Michigan loss. Ever since the Michigan loss, everybody's been uh, a lot more close-knit, um, even more close-knit than we already were. Uh, and we've just built on that games going past. And I feel like this one just kind of close but no cigar kind of deal. Um, and you could definitely feel that in the locker room. But we're on to the next one. Anything else for Ethan? Thank you, guys. Have a nice day.